Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Sick Podcast. Talk to Titans joined, as always, with my two counterparts. We have a great show today, as always. Tons of news to get into about the worst team in the National Football League, the teams you are fans of. That's the Tennessee Titans. So let's not waste a minute. Let's jump right into it. Sammy, start us up. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, give pitches it, to- it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, 40, He's got something. 50, He's got it. 40, He's got it. 20, 10, He's got 5, it. End zone. Touchdown Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick. It's going to be sick. Welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. You saw or you heard here Mikey talk about miracles. Well, one miracle you will not be seeing happen this year is the Titans in the postseason, and it's not even Halloween. We did not go live post game on Sunday. I'll just be flat out with you. I didn't want to, and and we, we have a, uh, you know, we have, I don't, I don't know what the right word is. Hit rock duty. Bottom. No, no, well, we're, we're, we're supposed to have a duty to all of you as a podcast. An obligation. Uh, an obligation is also a great $5 word to, to, to come on, make sure, you know, that we're always on giving you the news and giving you the status quo on, on the Titans. And, and I just didn't want to do it because I was just really disgusted. Um, and I just feel I felt like the team didn't care about us. So why should we show we care about I mean, the team? At let's the not, the let's day. not put all the blame on you first. No, 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 no. It, no. Was, I, it was my kid's sixth birthday, and we had a party. So there, there are yeah, allegations no, no, no. still tied, but we're bringing content no matter what this week. I'm saying that because you know if you didn't have anything going on, you know you were you were more than than ready to get live, and 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 I didn't want to do it. And I'm not putting the blame on me, you, or anybody. I'm just letting everybody know this is as bad as it could possibly get. That's that's the point I'm bringing it up for. Um, we are hitting rock bottom. And we're gonna get into everything, and uh, but let's briefly, briefly <laughs> go over what we thought about uh, from Sunday. Jared, go ahead. I mean, what did we expect? I mean, we knew we were going in Detroit, and it wasn't gonna be a bloodbath. I mean, they gave us hope at tied fourteen fourteen. I said, oh my god, you know what, what, what's going on here? I mean, but the Lions really didn't have the ball. Just looking at just looking at the stats uh, of the game. If I just if I just told numbers without you telling a side of who's who, you would think it's the Lions. I mean, we out possession them by 11 minutes for Christ's sakes. We had 23 first downs compared to 17, yet we still had 14 points. Okay, third down conversions, thir- three for 11. They were three for nine. We also outgained them four 416 yards to 225. There is asterisks all over this passing oh, yards well, 266. One, one. Yes, I'm getting I'm getting there. There's Passing yards, 266 compared to 94. If I told you Jared Goff threw for 94 yards and they scored 52 points, you it would be laughable. But it's not laughable because when the when the special teams unit, week in and week out of, of the Tennessee Titans, lets up big play after big play after big play and uh, block kicks, you know, uh, return yards. They had, what, damn near, what, close to 350 like, return yards, ladies. special team yards, yeah, something ladies. like that. That's absolutely ridiculous. And and to top it all off. On six runs. To top it all off, the guy that was doing it was an ex-Titan, and Khalif Raymond, who also had two touchdowns, a punt return and a receiving touchdown in that game. So that's just another dig and a stick to us that we can't retain players in, in, in game in games year after year. And every time we, we trade a player or release a player, they thrive in other systems. So I don't know what it is, as you touched on it before, Sal, with uh, Malik Willis going in to Green Bay, you know, after all of us saying we sucked, which I still said, wish them luck. I, I, I wish them that he wasn't – I mean – I didn't think he was going to be a great quarterback. And the same thing with Will Levis. We're going to touch on that. But Sunday's game was just um, abysmal on all phases. We knew it was going to happen. And and just to see it in that phase of special teams is pretty sad that they didn't even do something and hold a coach accountable. I don't care if it's his first year or not. When you let up all season long, what, what I mentioned, block kicks, return yards, yada, 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 something has to give and someone needs to be held accountable. And I can't believe Cole Anderson still has a job. Yeah, I mean, 
There's nothing really to say at this point. I said it on the show, and it was just me and you, Jerry, where I went off on the whole franchise as a whole. It's a dysfunctional franchise from the sense that, I don't know, maybe you don't have too many really real football guys high up in that front office in the ownership's ear. I, I don't really know. Rand Carthon was in the league. He was like, he, you know, uh, you, I don't know what the issue is, but you can name player after player who was here and left and was successful. And I'm not putting it past the likes of Will Levis. I think he's pretty bad, the worst quarterback in the league, maybe next to Anthony Richardson who just got benched. Uh, but I would have called that one too. I wouldn't put it past him to, um, you know, go somewhere else and have some success. It's clear he's not the same player he was last year. If you look at uh, last year's uh, tape and then this year, it's a different player. Um, I, I don't know. This seems a joke. It's hard to find nice things to say about them, aside from the fact maybe we like their colors. I, I don't really know. Nashville is a fun city, but there's not one thing about Tennessee Titan football right now to get excited about. And it doesn't really matter who they pick. What have they done to make us believe that they're going to make these picks work out? You know, you can go down the list the last couple of years with Carthon's drafts. Who was really a great pick, really? Tajay's been okay. Skronsky's been okay. Latham's been pretty good, but that's supposed to be a can't miss play. So this team's done nothing top to bottom to make us believe that, you know, we're going to. I mean, we our, we're going to change our ways, you know, and uh, I don't, I don't know what the issue is. There's, we can't, we can't really. We don't even know really where to start, and that's a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, the head, the head coach is a joke, the quarterback is a joke, special teams is a joke, defense seems to be keeping it together, but they're breaking because our offense has them bending so much that they can't help but to break eventually. So you don't really know where to start, where to fix the problem. I, I don't know. Well, I know where to start. All right, I know exactly where to start. Let's look at last week, okay? Let's look at another unfathomable, can't even describe it situation where it's first and goal on the one-yard line and you throw the ball four straight times, something this team in my wildest dreams that I ever think would ever do. And the one time you really would like them not to do what they did, which is throw the ball more and just run the fucking ball, they decide not to do it. Then you go back to the the week before that, in which it's a third and one. We run it up the middle. They fucking blow it up. They set up the same way, and we do the same thing. It's back-to-back weeks. Our head coach, who's the play caller, does unthinkable things. And again, I understand, you know, the status quo. You don't fire a coach in the middle of the season, especially a first-year coach, da 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 Nothing matters now, guys, okay? Colt Anderson still has a job. Maybe the easiest fire since Jerry Sandusky in in, in organized football, okay? Maybe the easiest fire. And we didn't do it. We didn't do it. I, 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 there, there's, there's, there's nothing left to really say here. Uh, you, you're supposed to, like the old saying goes, the, when you know it's time to go for a coach is when you lose the locker room. How can anyone tell me this head coach has this locker room? Mm. I, not even by a thread, okay? So how do you expect that to start when this team's going to keep getting embarrassed? You're, you're, the quarterback you want to build around is a complete disaster now, which, again, I said it on Twitter, you have many more bullet points, many more bullet points for an argument that Levis is getting destroyed by his environment than Levis destroying the coach and the team around them. You have a lot more bullet points for the first part. Is it the truth? I don't know. I hope to God we'll have a chance to find out in Tennessee, not seeing Levis in fucking Vegas or somewhere next year. But I don't know, and I don't want to find that out. But it, 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 Callahan is so over his head. He's so lost. And the Anderson... And the Anderson keeping is just the cherry on the, on the cake and how anyone can sit here and watch and say you're crazy for wanting to get rid of the coach is just a complete mind-boggling uh, statement to me. But um, I, yeah, wouldn't be all that, I wouldn't be all that surprised if he got fired at the end of the year. I know there's a lot of Titans fans that think you got to let him get his guy and Levis isn't his guy and this and that. Well, he also said he wanted this job because of Will Levis. So I don't know if him getting his guy, whether it's – He said that. 
Yeah, Will Levis said that. I mean, uh, Brian said that. He took the job because of Will Levis, so he didn't do anything right by him. Um, so who, what makes me think whoever he takes next is going to do right by, whether it's Shakur or Cam Ward. I, I'm not – I'm out on Callahan. I'm out on the whole franchise. I would blow it all up from top to bottom with Carthon and see if we can get it right this time. See if Amy has some high IQ football people in her ear that she wants to hire. But you know, I don't want to listen. They done. I I know it's it's over overreaction and you know everything is everything is you know what we've seen so far of Callahan and everything. But you got to give him to the end of the year. You heard it for himself. Maybe he thought Will Levis. Is going to be his quarterback. That's why he came here. You come to Jaws because you think a quarterback is there after a, a pretty decent year. Okay. If he's not catching on to it, it's very hard to get a quarterback. So this is why he said it's an experiment year. He needs to ride out and he needs to start against the Patriots at home and he needs to be healthy for the rest of the year because if we lose every game with him, yes, it's time for him to go, in my opinion. Okay. So this is his experiment for the rest of the year to try to right the ship, to right the doubters that, you know, he is the quarterback. Okay. To me, I see more of less. This is an ongoing um, issue. I don't think Brian Callahan's, you know, he, he, he's made mistakes. First year head coach, he's made his mistakes. So I'm going to defend him a little bit. I think it's more of a roster issue. Okay. And you guys can say what you want about that. Rand Carton did his job last year. He's done his job this year trying to get the guys. We were all excited. We Don't don't say you weren't because you were all excited. The blank checks came in. The players started That's coming you. in. Yes, of course. But this is more of a roster problem. Okay. 2022, the second half point differential for us under Mike Vrabel, minus 102. 2023, minus 76 under Mike Vrabel. This year, our second half point differential through seven games is minus 51 with Callahan. That screams to me a, a um, roster problem. So that screams to me a coach that doesn't make adjustments, Jerry. Okay, okay, but Vrabel is two of those two of those years. He sucked too. Okay, but I'm saying that's more of a roster problem. Either way, I mean the, the turnover. This is the is number. Happen. This is the number thought, one defense in the NFL. Yes. Here. Okay, but when when you have four hundred yards in in um, you're, you're, you're right. That's last week. What about yeah. the other five? Okay, weeks? but it's the offense too. Maybe it maybe is. the line isn't as really good as as we had it. Maybe the tight ends. You know, we, need, we, we need different makers and tight ends instead of blockers. Who's scared of Chico Conkle and Josh Josh Wiley? Yeah, they're they're um, proven names, but I'd rather have a Zach Ertz, a Mark Andrews, another uh, another big time um, tight end to solidify you know a, a scare threat. Because Where's other than that, you can double team uh, our two wide receivers. Now really one. Where's the excuse for the for the goal line play, bro? The fourth. The uh, there's four no passes. excuse for that. There's no I, excuse I, for I, that. Okay, That's well, this saying. is the second week he's That's done something I'm like saying. that. Yes, it's a rookie. That's not head a coach. roster problem. It's a rookie head coach. It's a rookie play caller who's never called plays before. Hopefully, he lives and learns with this. Now, we don't have time players, for that, Jared. We don't have it, time. There's no, there's no time this year. This 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 year's over. Okay, this is the experiment. If what we can do moving forward, if this is a play for next year, so so be it. Let's see what we're we're good at moving forward now. All right. This is the, these games are experimental now. I mean, yes, people are playing for jobs and everything, but, in my but, opinion. But, but why are we experimenting with a coach? It's not experimenting. Sure. It, yeah, well, we it, it wasn't playing. it wasn't week one. It now, now, now it's gonna be now. One now, now we need to see if Will Levis anymore. in my opinion, plain, plain and simple, the quarterback has put us in this spot from week one. Going into it, we should have been three and one. We're not. We're not well, one we and six. We had Mason Rudolph the last two weeks, so we got him. Okay, but that's 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 Mason Rudolph. Will Levis started this journey as as, as offers. All right. To me, like I said a couple weeks ago, I'm out on the Will Levis train. Right now, we're sitting at number two in the draft, and you're damn well bet I would want Cam Ward because out of the last five, uh, three Heisman's or the last uh, four Heisman's, Cam Ward has been putting no, up the course. best numbers out of all of those guys. And he's faced right? better competition. 20, Better competition. He has 2,500 yards. He has 24 touchdowns. He's better than Jaden Daniels' numbers last year. Prior to that, better than Caleb Williams um, in 2000, uh, 2021 or whatever, is 22, when he won the Heisman. So Cam Moore, to me, is a lock at us it, it, uh, for number two if we're talking quarterback right away. So he's a, pro he's a proven uh, winner. He, he, he He's yeah. mobile in the quarterback. He throws. Will Levis can't do it. You don't know that we're going to get him, though. I mean, it, 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 either either one. If we're, if we're floating one or two, you know we're going to get one of those playmakers. All right, but I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for Cam Ward. 
All right, he has that dog mentality. Yes, Sanders does too. I mean, we're talking quarterbacks here. Will Levis doesn't. He still makes the bonehead plays. I'm going back to his college days in Kentucky, and I'm going back to his college days at, at Penn State. Right. Okay, like I said, we said the same. We said the same things about Malik Willis, and now he is a he's the best backup in the NFL. So great. I you don't think for one Joe second Flacco is the best backup in the NFL. I don't know. Joe Flacco wasn't making that throw Malik made on the Joe sideline. Flacco got the the playoffs. You're right, he did, but you know, regardless, regardless. Malik Willis looks like a guy who yeah, he might yeah, he looks like a different might player. get a starting job next year. Yeah, he, he looks like a different player, but okay. he looks like a different player. Uh, Will Levis uh, was making the kind of boneheaded plays that even Malik Willis didn't. Malik Willis ran around and ended up taking a sack, but he didn't end up making those dumbass turnovers that Will Levis had. That week one, I'll never get out of my mind. Week two, no, he just he never would, threw the ball. He would take every sack that came his way. Which is better than turning the ball. You're right. You know, right. I, I don't know, guys. We're, we're really grasping for straws here, talking about the draft. Week seven. We're eight, not, eight. though. We're None not of us, for straws. No we're the worst team in the league. No, one really, no, I mean, so what things to talk about, because no one really even knows where to start. You know, what do you really do? Do you give the – you keep the GM. You got get rid of the coach. You get rid you're of. You're not getting rid. You're not getting rid of yeah. nobody. So just, you, you, know, you know what you're, you're, you're getting rid of. You know what you're getting rid of the trade. The trade of. capital right now to get a third round pick for this team next year to start building the roster again. I told how you, can you. How could you trust? How could you trust Rand Carthon after his seven and 17, 18 yeah, record? Yeah. He, no, he inherited. He still like inherited John Robinson's shit. Know, like John like Robinson. Robinson. He's trying to bring it over. His he's last two drafts full, have been good. He's had two full offs. Who? Two who last two drafts have not good. been good. Who oh in the game? Will Levis. We traded up. Sucks. Tajay Spears hasn't proven himself. Talented, but hasn't really amounted to anything. Skaronski looks like a bust one week. Mediocre the next week. Latham is a top seven pick, so he should be good. He's been all right. Latham should be an all pro. And he what, looks like he's not going to be. Bradley Jr. is not a really, starter. What draft pick has he really, you know, uh, made you really hang your hat on and say, wow, he really knows what he's doing? He's put together this roster the last two years. Someone's going to have to pay the fiddler if we go fucking two and 15. Yeah, somebody's got. I don't see how. Arthon and Callahan aren't staying if this team loses 15 I, I, games. I don't see how. I, I agree. I don't see. Someone's got to go. And it better be more than the fucking special teams coach. If you go one and 16, two and 15, how do you just keep them together and think that things are going to get different? I, I don't, you know, is that what do you, what do you uh, uh, now? Here's your question. If the next head coach and the next GM, the next prior year, they go three and whatever. And then the next year after that, they, they win two or four games. You're getting rid of that head coach and GM. Yes. going to keep turning around, turning around, turning Until around. You, you have think it's going to be coach. like this. No, it's not going to be like this, Jared, but you, you're you not going to be the worst team in football. Um, listen, Ryan I know. Callahan is coaching the worst team in the NFL. No one dreamed it would be this bad. Why are we letting him off the hook? We're not talking about a team that's 3-3 three and three, or even uh, – we're talking about a 1-6 team that should be 0-7. They, they won that Miami game on, a, on a, just a, a team that wasn't prepared to play. If they were even remotely prepared – with a quarterback that's seen a fucking practice, they because Huntley's playing better now. They're still not good enough. But the point is, this this is the, this isn't debatable. This is the worst team. This is worse than Carolina. They're worse than New England. You're gonna see because I think they're gonna lose at home. I just I don't understand. This was supposed to be an experimental year to find out about Levis, but we were supposed to be competitive. And after the first couple weeks, yes, Levis had a big hand in why the the, the games ended the way they do. But this team is so unorganized. They have no leadership. Everyone in the locker room is complaining about how we can't fight when we face adversity. Hello? That's the head coach. Nobody respects this guy. So now you want me, after we've waited two years now, it'll be two years with zero relevant Titan football. I'm supposed to give Callahan another year with another quarterback when he made this one regress to levels we could never even dream of? Come on. No, you can't expect any real diehard Titan fan to have that kind of patience. This guy is shit the bed beyond imagination. And we're not even halfway through the season. And it's going to get worse when we trade more players because we're going to trade more players. Oh, well, we have to. I have four right on the sheet right now that I would trade automatically right now. So you want to hope we get Cam Ward, Shador Sanders with this fucking guy? Who's gonna who's gonna you know run the ball up the middle twice in a row, a mirror image of the same play, and then four passing plays on first and one on the goal line? I 
this this just there's no gray area in my opinion here. I'm sorry. We're beyond the pat, point of return. This is no longer a give this guy some more time. He's had it and he's been a disaster. This is coming from a guy who wanted a new coach so badly. This is this is a fucking nightmare. Cole we- Anderson is still on the team as his coach. What are we doing? We that that's just another unexcusable thing to add to the shit pile, Jared. Can you not agree? No, I listen. I said it before. I don't know how he's. If you're going to hold somebody accountable, it has to be him at, at that point because that's unfathomable. What, what's been going on with special teams? So I agree with you on that. I'm not agreeing with you guys on, on just Shikan and uh, Rand Carthon and and Callahan after one year. I am not Carthon. Well, I'll moving, give him a little more. Time. I am moving on from Will Levis though. That's 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 a hundred. But wait I mean, a second though, Jared. And I don't want to go on a tangent again. But how can you give up on him? And not Brian Callahan. Because Callahan has a, a track record with quarterbacks. Okay. He has uh, an offense. Yeah. He had, yeah. He didn't call plays, but he, he was under um, Zach uh, Taylor's wing. So he knows what's going on. This is a first year head coach, a first year play caller. And He's still in the NFL. Bad. This isn't growing pains, though, Jarrett. Well, it's are, growing these... pains now. It's I'm growing bad. pains I'm... now. Between Bill or Brian Callahan and Will Levis. Who's had more production at their current job? I wouldn't even say I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say Levis either. Like I said, it was very I'll mediocre. Come on, Jared. Will Levis looked better on the one he had last year. Sure, I'll give you that, Vin. I'll give you that. You might have motivated him. You might have screamed. Maybe. You, know, you might be right. Maybe they respected Big Mike a little bit. Maybe what? you're fucking right. And a you know what? The guy's always right. Make, Ital- make America Italian again. And I yeah, you want, want you want you want spaghetti and meatballs for everybody. That's and if right. nothing else, if nothing else, when Vrabel was going around just acting like Levis was the fucking not as great as everyone made it seem, Levis looked down about it, and it was good that he looked down about it because he didn't get his head all fucking big. And once that stopped happening, he's doing commercials left, right. I got to give Vrabel credit. I can kind of understand why maybe he didn't like Levis so much. Because Levis comes in here without any fucking really doing a damn thing. He has one excellent game, and now he's walking around like his shit don't stink. And now his shit does stink. I still don't think Vrabel's a great head coach. But Vrabel's a better head coach than Brian Callahan. Yeah, so are the three of us. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, my God. You think Mike Vrabel's throwing the ball four times on the goal line on first and goal? I'm just saying, I I never would have thought you would have said that. I mean, I would never would have thought you would have said that, it, Jared. It's be it's this is the worst this team's been since like 2015. This is 2015, 2015. bad. Yep. I, I totally so I mean, agree obviously, I'm not going to be naive and sit here and say that Callahan's better than Rainbow. Of course, I wouldn't. They're both not great. They're both not taking a team to the Super Bowl because <clears throat> Rabel doesn't call plays. All he's there for is motivation, pretty much, and decision making. And Callahan c- couldn't call a fucking offense for a pee wee football team. So. They uh, both have their. Let's move on to the players that we think could get moved. Throw them up there, Jar. Who do we think can get moved before? You want me? You want me to talk, or you, or you, you want to say yeah. your your piece on who you think? Who I think should get moved? Yeah. Uh, who do I think we still have some value with? Um, Howard Landry. He could probably make a a competitor like Detroit yeah, a little bit better than they even are. Uh, I would I would probably take – I mean, listen, you have to be realistic. You're not going to get a first or a second round pick for anybody less than the caliber of like an A.J. Brown type player, which we don't have. Even Jeff Simmons, you're not going to get a first round pick for. I, I don't know about that. The way he got moved on that goal line, he got pushed back eight yards. Yeah, so. I, don't, I, don't I think, think you might get a first for Jeff. We're not we're not moving him, although, you know, I, I whatever. I'm not ruling anything out. But I think Howard Landry could be a player to go for, you know, a third and a, and a fifth type thing, you know, a third and a fourth. Uh, who else could go? No one's taking on Calvin Ridley's brand new uh, contract. And like he, I said, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, that wouldn't make any sense anyway to move. You can't. Him. You got to have pieces still around for. Yeah, for no, next I, year. And he proves he can still play when he has, you know, a fucking coach that doesn't have his head up his ass. When, yeah. he, when he when he has the opportunity to get the ball in his hands, but um, Diggs, you can move Quandre Diggs. I think you can still get some value with him. Um, who else? Monty Hooker. No, yeah, I, I, I would keep. I would keep Hooker. The only I got three. I got four people. I said I got Key, uh, Landry, uh, Quandre Diggs, and Special Joseph Day. If you get anywhere between three, four, five, 
six, I'll take everything because as much capital you get from there is where you could start moving up into yeah, the draft. Tyler Boyd. Okay. Well, I so I mean, Tyler, Ty, Tyler Boyd, another, waste. He's another, a waste another of rental, the roster spot, another, another rental we can get rid of is Tyler Boyd to, to a contender. Um, I mean, he has a one year contract, a one year deal. I mean, those are the types, those are the types of deals that I, I, I would expect uh, rant, rant to make because I mean, literally one, it will be, one and six. If we, I mean, what we're, we would be one and seven if we lose at home to the Patriots. And, and at that point, what's, what's the trade? Now. What's the trade deadline? November fifth. So we're about a week away. And I can't stress to you how important it is that we lose to them, bro. The the, the Patriots I, just beat the Jets. I, I think I, I think we're we're yeah, gonna play them well. Probably, and especially if Will Levis plays, man, I wouldn't be. Wait, Jared, I hate to break it to you, bro, but this team is better with Will Levis. This team is better than Will, Will Levis than Mason Rudolph, my man. I hate to break it to you. We'll see. It's not even, really, I don't even think it's discuss, uh, debatable. Look, 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 your, your, your only argument would be the Dolphin game, which was a complete I'm not, I, 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 to, I told you, they scored 14 points on that, and they kicked how many field goals? Five. So, I mean, still, you can't score more than three, four touchdowns in a game, but until proven otherwise – yeah, I mean, I think right now it's uh, accumulate draft picks and lose games is the strategy from the front offices uh, and ownership game plan. But that's also tough sometimes, too, because you have players that are trying to put, you know, good film on tape, you know, if of not this year for next year as well. So I would not be surprised if we win this game. I, uh, I don't really care what they do at this point. I've seen enough of Will Levis. I've seen enough of Mason Rudolph. We're a complete joke. Uh, throw whoever you want in there, but they need to uh, do their best to make sure they lose to put ourselves in the best position to get maybe not a quarterback because I've been on the record saying I don't think it's all that necessary. If you don't love one, when you're going to have the likes of Travis Hunter up there, you're going to have the likes of that receiver from – uh, Arizona up there, Not really and could be now. really bad for another year. Really bad for another year, and have your eyes on. Uh, I've said it before, Arch Manning for that new Oof. state in in, in twenty twenty seven. Yeah, I mean, uh, just so, so we'll I can't wait another out. year though. That's the thing. I can't wait another. Yeah, year. It, could, it could be it could be miserable, but you know, we'll we'll see what uh you know. Listen, we don't know what they're gonna do because you don't know who's gonna be here. You know who's going to be here? Carthon and 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 uh, Callahan could be gone. Only one of them could be gone. So we could talk to her blue in the face about you know Shador Sanders and Cam Ward and, and Arch Manning, but we don't know what they're doing until we we even know who's going to be here next year. You know, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, nothing would surprise me at this point. Like you said, Seth, someone's got to pay the piper for this at the end of the year. You can't have you can't retain a staff entirely. Yeah. Top. To I bottom. mean, anyone who's watching this who thinks. This team's going to be two and seventeen this year, or two and fifteen this year. And Callahan and Rick Carthon are staying. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but that's just the dumbest shit I've ever heard. If yeah. this team's on the fast track to a top three pick, one of those two is gone. And potentially, well, one of those two is gone. Amy's Amy. I mean, like I said, Amy. Not like anyone enjoys getting embarrassed, but Amy doesn't take well to getting embarrassed. And this would be the most embarrassed she's been in a decade. And that's just not going to happen when you just got rid of Mike Vrabel, who some people thought wasn't supposed to get fired, to bring in a new regime who gave you one of the worst seasons in franchise history. That's just – it ain't happening. There's no – this this roster at week one was nowhere close to being the worst roster in the NFL, and we are undoubtedly the worst team in the NFL. Um and you're going to see that proven on Sunday, I think, because I think we're going to lose by about 10 to 14 against the Patriots. Because if Brissett, cool. if Jacoby Brissett plays, we know he is the prototypical quarterback that just has a fucking day against our team. He's going to have a day. He's probably going to throw for about 275. I'll say two touchdowns. Um, and if we do win, it'll have to be with Levis. Rudolph isn't beating anybody. He's a fucking statue. Who has who can't even he doesn't even have good accuracy for a mobile quarterback. We can get that out of the way too. He threw a ball just d directly to the fucking safety, stared him down for an hour, just like we cried about Levis doing. He's no different, which is why he's a backup. Um, but uh, yeah, and I can't understate I can't understate how unfortunate the Willis situation is because at least if if fucking Levis was so bad. That we didn't, at least we have another guy we drafted early a couple of years ago. Man, we'll give him it. 
But it wouldn't have mattered because, again, our staff is terrible. We can't fucking make anybody look good in the NFL other than defense. And uh, that's it. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. Of course, I in the chat, yeah, 15 minutes, a half hour. Of course, that's always how it works because this team, no matter what, just gets the blood boiling. But um, hopefully you guys show up. Maybe, you know what? I don't know. Maybe maybe I should say don't show up. Maybe that'll make things change. But I can't do that. I hope you guys at least show up on Sunday. Maybe it has to, slight, man. I mean, we, we, need, we need those. We need those home field events. I mean, we don't. We don't have it. It's, it. it sucks. But I mean, who is? You don't blame anybody for not going to the game, especially with the ticket prices and the and the product on the field. I mean, Callahan said it at the press conference uh, himself. He, we're not putting a great product on the field, and the fans should be pissed off. I mean, yeah. Um, but you know, I think. Uh, we're just going to keep letting this shit, this shit storm keep brewing and brewing and brewing. And we just got to pray to God that eventually when the storm dissipates and maybe the sun starts to creep through the clouds, it'll be shining down on either a quarterback or the quarterback we have. I don't know. Again, I understand why you might think it is absurd to think that Will Levis could still potentially be a perennial starting quarterback, a potential franchise quarterback. But with the staff that we have and how poorly they're doing their job, it would be naive not to believe there's a chance that's possible. It would just be flat out naive. I'm sorry. So, Vin, I don't know if you're uh, twiddling your thumb on the mic or what's going on there, but uh, somebody's uh, mic's buzzing. Scrolling, scrolling on the Twitter sphere. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, you know what we're going to do real quick before we sign out? Got to give a special shout out, as always, to our fantastic sponsors. Um, as always, we'll start with our, our good friends over at DraftKings. It promises to be a month of tricks, treats, and, of course, touchdowns at DraftKings Sportsbook. An official sports betting partner in the NFL is the number one place to bet touchdowns. Score big. With DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Six Sports. That is code Six Sports for new customers to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks only on DraftKings. Crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler in New York. Call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y or text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, twenty one and over. Age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire one hundred sixty eight hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. And Jarrett, you want to take over on our buddies over at Varsity? Yeah, I'll take Varsity's. But before that, um, just the current line for the Titans and Patriots game right now. Titans are minus three and a half at home. What? So, no way. Yes. <laughs> so they are minus three, and the over-under is at 38, <laughs> which is probably, you know. Just One of about, the lowest in NFL history. Yeah, I mean, damn near close to it. But uh, varsity coolers, uh, varsity coolers is a line of coolers that are stylish as they are functional. It is a waterproof cooler that holds up to thirty cans cold for eighteen hours. Whether you're repping your team, hitting the open road, rounding up your friends on a boat day, or just having a blast, you deserve timeless styles, peak functionality, and most importantly, ice cold beverages. Varsity coolers is here to deliver all of that and much more. And like I said. I took my uh, varsity cooler out this weekend, a couple beers with the boys on Saturday, and I'm taking it to Notre Dame and Florida State next weekend. It's a great oh my bag. God. Yes, my teams are shit this year. Oh, shit. One and We're seven, so, one and six. It's who's just, the line on that game? I don't know. Probably minus uh, four I mean, two I Notre the Dame. Only team worse than the uh, <laughs> only team worse than the Titans or the New York Yankees right now. You know? The Yankees. There you go. Sal just lives in misery. <laughs> That's it's, what? it builds character to lose a world series so i was there too and gets and get swept we're not getting swept number one i don't know about two. that um i never thought in a million years that any of my sport icons would let me down more than will levis and boy oh boy there's a guy <laughs> that plays baseball that i love that is letting me down like nobody's business and he is a seven foot fucking pile of shit right now um, but I digress, not six ten, whatever he is, but um six seven. I think he's actually six seven. I didn't anyway. really stack shit that high. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're, they're stacking shit real high in the Bronx right now. They're stacking a lot of shit. 
but anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. As always, appreciate everybody joining in. If you're following the show, we appreciate it. If you're not, please just hit that subscribe button. It takes two seconds. The more support we have from all of you, the better content we can continue to provide. And that's what we're looking to do. So uh, I hope everyone has a phenomenal rest of their week. We will be on later on to uh, talk about this fucking future debacle that's going to go down. I mean, I would be so embarrassed to get the email or the call from either CBS or Fox to find out, hey, you're heading to Nashville to do the Patriots-Titans game this week. <laughs> um, that's got to be a rough call to take. But somebody's got to do it, and uh, we'll find out which one. Adam Archuleta is going to do a great job. No, I don't think – Archuleta is too good for this game now. <laughs> he used to be a good candidate. This is out of his – we're going to get probably a chick – and or we'll get some guy they pulled out of, you know, South Florida and he's trying to get a chance and we'll, we'll see. But anyway, guys, as always, hope everyone has a phenomenal rest of their week and tighten up, Sammy. Send us out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Talking Titans on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play and Apple Podcasts. 